So obviously I don't have any personal experience with the menstrual cycle. So I don't consider myself an expert necessarily on fasting and menstruation, but I've talked to some people who are, and that includes Megan Ramos, who's a clinical educator, works with Dr. Jason Fung over at The Fasting Method. She was on episode 14 of my podcast. I also interviewed one of her colleagues, Dr. Nadia Pateguana. I think that was episode 24. And I've read some things and listened to some things that they've said elsewhere about this topic as well. So putting it all together, I've got some expert tips for you about fasting and the menstrual cycle. So in this video, I'm going to cover the basics of the menstrual cycle, make sure we're all on the same page, and then talk about when to fast, what to do when you're not fasting during the menstrual cycle, and what to do if you don't even have a menstrual cycle, like after menopause or for other reasons. My name is Ben. I'm a PA, and I share tips and strategies to help you improve your health through fasting, nutrition, and other similar means. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the basics. Let's just go over the menstrual cycle real quick, and then we'll get into when to fast during the cycle. So I'll go ahead and put up an image on the screen that's kind of a graph of the cycle. And so that first half, you can see on the left, it's labeled as the follicular phase. So that's when the menstrual bleeding happens, and then there's a buildup to ovulation. So if um, so, ovulation would happen in the middle if everything kind of works the way it normally works. Um, and in the middle there at ovulation, there's that spike of a few different hormones, including estrogen and some other ones. And then the second half of the menstrual cycle is when a woman either gets pregnant or eventually doesn't, and then it all starts over again with sloughing off and having the bleeding and so forth. So during that second half, you can also notice that there's elevated progesterone, That's that reddish colored mountain looking thing on the second half. Um, So the the progesterone is one reason why fasting during the second half of the menstrual cycle can be more difficult. So that's after ovulation, before bleeding. Um, And that's maybe partly because progesterone can stimulate hunger. So ultimately what you want to do is you want to fast during the first half of the menstrual cycle or do more of your fasting or or more aggressive types of fasting, more ambitious types of fasting um, during that first half when it's probably going to be easier, at least for most women. Um, And one reason, again, is because progesterone is lower during that first half. So what about that second half of the cycle, though? So what if you're trying to get in a fairly consistent routine with intermittent fasting and use that to reduce body fat or get other health benefits? What do you do during the second half? Well, there are a variety of options, and I'll share a few. If you want to keep making some progress with your health goals, you could do one of the following. You could focus on meal timing. So having like a really consistent two meals a day or, or even three meals a day and not having any snacks in between. And even just by doing that, most people are going to make some headway in terms of improving blood sugar or reducing body fat and what have you, because it's usually the snack foods and the desserts and the alcoholic drinks and stuff. So if you're kind of avoiding those things, usually you're still going to be making some progress. Um, And if you're not, you could also make a point of eating whole foods, not necessarily things you buy at that grocery store called whole foods, but whole foods, meaning unprocessed foods. If you like really strive to eat unprocessed food, that's going to have some additional health benefits as well. And then if you're trying to continue to reduce body fat during that second half, another thing that helps is if you eat a lot of protein, If you eat a lot of protein and not as much of other things like the carbohydrates and fat. So if you make a point of eating a lot of protein. So there are various high protein foods. Um, Some of the ones, some of of the most reliable high protein foods are the meat, fish, poultry, eggs, uh, dairy. And then there's, you know, different supplements and things like that. But getting a lot of protein is usually going to help most people improve their body composition, reduce body fat, and just make it easier to stay satisfied while still losing weight. Now, if during that second half of the menstrual cycle, you want to do something more ambitious than just meal timing or avoiding processed foods or eating more protein, if you want to do something a little bit more similar to fasting, you could try fat fasting. What is fat fasting? Well, it's when you eat a lot of fat and not much else. And so it it kind of simulates fasting in your body. That's because fat doesn't really raise your insulin. And when your insulin is nice and low, then the things that are happening in your body are more similar to fasting. You're relying on body fat as your main source of energy. You're producing a lot of ketones. And then um, 
you know, you're kind of getting into that fasting mode to some extent. It's not identical, but it has a lot of similarities. Now, you can either do this fat fasting with literally just fat. So that'd be like where you have spoonfuls of coconut oil, maybe in your coffee, maybe just by themselves, for example. Or you can do something that's a little bit more liberal, where it's not literally just fat, but it's a lot of fatty foods. And here's one version of it, which again uh, comes also from Megan Ramos. Um, if you choose these four foods and eat as much as you want, it's a, it's a version of fat fasting. And the four foods are eggs and bacon, avocados, and olives. So eggs, bacon, avocados, olives. So if you have those four foods, use some salt, but basically no other seasonings, and just eat as much as you want, then that's a version of fat fasting, and it has some similarities to fasting, so you can kind of get some of the benefits, even if you're not doing full-blown fasting. So what if you don't even have a menstrual cycle? Well, if you're past menopause or if there's some other reason why your cycle is irregular or, or maybe even something completely different, like you had a hysterectomy or whatever, then there still could be some hormonal fluctuations that could affect how easy or difficult it is to fast. For example, your estrogen and progesterone levels might still be kind of going up and down, maybe on a monthly type pattern, maybe over a little bit longer amount of time or shorter amount of time at least to some extent, maybe not as much as they would otherwise. But what you can basically do is keep a journal. If you kind of keep track of like, oh, during this week, things were easier. During this week, things were harder. Or, you know, my energy was higher or lower. Or, you know, I was hungrier all the time this week versus that other week. Then you kind of might notice a pattern eventually. And then you can use that to your advantage to figure out when it makes sense to do maybe a longer fast or something and when it makes sense to just focus on things like meal timing or the type of food that you're eating. So if you want to get some other tips about fasting, I've got a playlist right here that's about women and fasting with a bunch of videos on that topic. And then I have another playlist here that's kind of beginner fasting tips in general, not specifically for women. So either way, there's a lot of different videos you can use to keep figuring out how to start your fasting journey. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.